A gig a long time ago, a big pile of space has coalesced to form the solar system, being mostly, but not exclusively, composed of one star and a primary planet. Venus is the third densest planet, and the second largest terrestrial planet, falling just short of Earth. However, the two worlds could not be more different. Venus, despite being the second closest planet to the Sun, is actually the hottest, with an average temperature of 462 degrees Celsius, due to a suffocating atmosphere that is 93 times the mass of our own, with an equally deadly composition of 96.5% carbon dioxide, 3.5% nitrogen and traces of other gases, causing Venus to have a wild runaway greenhouse effect. Nevertheless, Venus wasn't always like this. Around 3 billion years ago, it would have resembled the Earth a lot, with warm, temperate oceans covering a good portion, but not the entirety of the planet. But then what happened to ruin this second Earth-like planet? The answer was the Sun. The central star of our solar system is a star like any other. It burns and sustains itself by fusing hydrogen to helium in its core. The more hydrogen gets converted to helium, the brighter the sun will become. And even though the sun fuses over 600 million tons of hydrogen per second, compared to its total mass, it is a very slow process. The graph on screen shows the evolution of a sun-like star's brightness, radius and temperature over its life. 3 billion years ago, the sun was about a fifth less luminous than it is now, fusing continuously but over time, it slowly increased in brightness. Until around 3 billion years ago, when it hit a tripping point for Venus and triggered one of the most disastrous planetary catastrophes known to science. A runaway greenhouse effect, as the increasing brightness of the sun slowly rose to temperature on Venus until a chain reaction was triggered in the climate. Around 3 billion years ago, Venus got so hot that the ocean started to evaporate. Water vapor is a strong greenhouse gas, and the more water evaporated, the faster the oceans disappeared. On Earth, carbon dioxide is absorbed into the oceans. When it evaporates, it rains down in the form of acid rain, which is then absorbed by rocks. However, on Venus, any CO2 dissolved into the oceans was released into the atmosphere as the oceans literally boiled away. This could have amounted to over 1 quadrillion tons of carbon dioxide and thickened the atmosphere so significantly that it rose the temperature so high that even the CO2 stored in the rocks got baked out, turning Venus into the closest real-life resemblement of hell that we have found so far. Venus takes 224.7 Earth days to orbit the Sun, a fairly normal orbit time. However, Venus rotates clockwise in a retrograde rotation, the only other planet that rotates retrograde being Uranus. Kind of. Which spins on its sides. Furthermore, Venus has the slowest rotation of all planets, taking 243 days to complete one rotation, making the day on Venus last longer than a year. As mentioned in the last video, Venus together with Mercury is an inferior planet, therefore it displays phases similar to the Moon's. Venus takes 584 days to display a full set of phases, However, the only phase visible with the naked eye is a crescent phase, with recordings of Venus' crescent phase dating as far back as ancient Mesopotamia. While Venus does possess a magnetic field, it is extremely weak, meaning that it is unable to protect its atmosphere from cosmic rays. But why is this? Venus is roughly the same size as Earth, and has a similar composition, yet the Earth has a strong magnetic field. At first, it was believed that due to the slow rotation of Venus, it was unable to form a dynamo, but simulations prove this theory wrong. The current scientific theory is that due to the fact that Venus lacks a solid metal core, it is unable to form a strong magnetic field, however this theory has not yet been proven. In addition, 80% of the surface is covered by plains, with the other 20% being island continents. There are two continents, one situated in the northern hemisphere, and one just south of the equator, called Ishtar Terra and Aphrodite Terra respectively. The highest point on Venus is Maxwell Mons, with a height of 11 km, and it lies on Ishtar Terra. Despite the deadly hostility of the planet, the Romans thought the planet looked beautiful in the night sky due to its brightness. As such, they named it after their goddess of beauty and love, Venus. And it is also known as the morning and evening star due to its appearance and at sunrise and sunset respectively. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to watch EG's video on how Venus became what it is today. The link is in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to me and EG. See you next time!